What's up guys? Welcome to our channel. Today's video is something a little bit different to our normal vlogs. Today we're actually doing a review and unboxing of the brand new Osmo Action, which is the latest action camera from DJI. It's actually the first action camera that DJI has ever made. DJI have been dominating the gimbal and the drone market for quite a long time. A lot of people have been asking why they don't make action cameras for quite some time, um, myself included. I didn't really understand why they hadn't done it as of yet because they're already making small cameras with their drones. So it just makes sense that they put something like this out. Um, this was actually announced to the public literally a couple of hours ago. I've had this for about a week. I've been taking it around with me, playing around with it, just getting used to it, getting some cool footage on it. I actually don't know when it will be in stores as of yet, but DJI is normally pretty quick, so I'm sure it'll be out pretty soon. I do know that it's gonna be priced at 499 Australian dollars. If you're watching this video, you may not be somebody from our regular audience. You may just be somebody who's wanting to know all about this camera. So I'm gonna get straight into the nitty gritty do an unboxing and show you guys what you get when you buy this. First thing you're gonna see is the Osmo Action. You're gonna notice the LCD on the front. It comes complete with a little cage. Next up, you got this little box that comes with all of your accessories, pretty much everything you'd expect to get with an action camera. You've got the battery, which is a, it's a little bit of an odd looking battery that just clips in underneath usb cable so that you can charge it uh yeah as i said usual suspects it also comes with a couple of uh sticky mounting brackets uh there's two different ones one with a curve um, and the circular flat one which you're looking at at the moment one thing that you'll notice with these mounting brackets is they don't just uh push in and clip like most camera mounting brackets do they actually you have to push in this little thing here twist, take it off, put it back in, twist, and kind of clip it in. It probably does make it more secure, but it does also make it more fiddly. It's not super fiddly, but it's, it is fiddly enough that it's a little bit annoying. Something that is a really big deal about this camera is it has a front facing LCD screen. It's actually the first ever action camera to have that front facing LCD screen, which I think is amazing. It's a 1.5 inch LCD. So it is slightly cropped. When you're looking at yourself, it's not cropped when you're recording, like the footage that you get out of it is full 1080 or 4K, whatever you're shooting in. But when you're actually looking at the frame, you're pretty much seeing like the sides of it cut off, which to me isn't really an issue. I just like the fact that you can actually see yourself when you're filming yourself, you know pretty much what the frame is gonna be like. And they've actually made it really, really easy to do. All you need to do is hold down this quick select button on the side and it will change from the view on the back to the view on the front and then you hold it again and it'll go straight back to the, the, the back view, which is something that I found really, really convenient. Uh, the quick selection button in general was something that I liked. Um, you can shuffle through different modes that you're gonna use really, really quickly. So let's say you're filming and you're filming in a uh, regular 60 frames a second and all of a sudden you wanna go over to slow motion, you just press it twice, bam, you're in slow motion. Or you wanna switch over to HDR mode, bam, you're in HDR mode. Or you wanna switch over to photo mode, bam, 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 you're in uh, photo mode. And I just find that really easy. You don't have to worry about doing, you know, like, swipes on the screen or any of that. It's set up so that you can use it really, really quick and easy. Another thing that a lot of people have been asking about is this lens at the front. It kind of appears like it has a um, screw out lens cover on it. And I'm 90% I'm sure you can actually twist this really hard and take it off. Um, it doesn't come off easy because I have tried to unscrew it and I'm, I'm kind of scared to like really really crack it open because sometimes when you take these things off you can kind of uh, mess with the water seal so i haven't done it um, but i am curious to see if they're going to bring out some new lenses or uh, nd filters and things like that that can fit on this camera in the future that's actually something that i'm really curious about myself it is waterproof up to 11 meters in the case you don't need any kind of 
uh, body or anything like that, which I feel is pretty standard for action cameras these days. You kind of expect them to be waterproof. I didn't get a chance to test it out underwater because it is freezing cold over here right now. In terms of specs, it has pretty much everything you would expect from an action camera these days. It shoots 4K, 60 frames, and you can shoot all the way up to 240 frames in 1080, which is dope. That's crazy slow motion like this is my daughter on the swing in super slow motion. It just looks so nice and smooth. And I love being able to shoot slow motion like that. And as I said, you can literally just hit the quick selection button twice and you're automatically in slow motion. You don't have to fiddle around. So if you're wanting to shoot in a regular frame rate and then there's something that happens that you're like, oh wait, I wanna get that in slow motion and you just wanna like change up really quick, so convenient for that. That's something that I really like. It also shoots 4K HDR. I didn't experiment with it a lot, but this is one shot that I shot in 4K HDR. Um, and I noticed that you can actually see a lot more detail in the sky than when shooting in regular mode, which is the exact same environment right now. But this shot here is in just 1080 regular. Um, you're not seeing as much detail in the sky. So it's pretty cool being able to shoot that. Um, the HDR, regardless of whether you're shooting in 4K or 1080 is capped at 30 frames a second. The ISO range is 100 to 3200. So it's not exactly a low light beast. I mean, it'll hold up. In low light, okay, but it is going to start getting grainy as it gets dark. Uh, that's pretty much the case with most action cameras, if not all. The official specs say that you get 135 minutes shooting 1080 and 63 minutes. Yes, not 60, 63, though, very specific with that. 63 minutes if you're shooting in 4K, which is actually really good. I actually feel like you probably get a bit longer than that because I feel like I definitely shot for longer than two hours worth with this. A really amazing feature on this is the Rock Steady Electronic Image Stabilization. Image stabilization is such a big thing these days. It's something that's becoming better and better, whether it's with a gimbal or if it's actually in camera. Electronically stabilized. I was actually really surprised as to how stable the image was, this is me completely handheld, no image stabilization, no color grading, no nothing, just running behind my daughter. And something you can't actually see is I have my one-year-old in my arms while I'm shooting this. So I don't really have the greatest steady cam walk while I'm doing this. And it literally looks like I have a gimbal in my hand. It's just so, incredibly smooth like i'm panning i'm walking i'm like everything just looks smooth you're not getting that horrible uh warping that you get when you warp stabilize uh footage on your computer like after the fact it just it looks buttery i am <laughs> i'm seriously impressed there's my daughter i finally just put it down i was like man this is way too hard having to walk around and film and and <laughs> and hold a kid at the same time. She's so cute. Next up, I wanna show you guys what it's like when you're vlogging with it and when you're running with it, because that's a real test of how stable the camera is gonna be when you're actually running with the camera in your hand and talking to it. So here is some footage of me at the park running with the camera, really putting it through its paces. out of breath already. I really need to get fit. All right, there we have it. The run test on the image stabilization. It's currently golden hour right now. It's a really nice calm day. There's next to no wind. So this is how the microphone sounds in ideal conditions. Um, I'm gonna throw it straight into the video. I don't have any idea how it sounds, so I'm curious myself. As you guys can see from that footage, it was buttery smooth. Uh, the audio wasn't the greatest because of the wind. Um, I think it was a little bit better in that second take when I was in ideal situations. Um, it's, I think that's always gonna be the case with action cameras. I've never seen an action camera that has amazing audio. It is always a little bit more, image-based 
but it's still definitely something that I can and have vlogged with. I actually did a vlog on it the other day when me and the kids went to the plant shop and bought some strawberries. The intro of that video was shot 100% on this. So all of the audio, all of the video, it's definitely something you can vlog with wouldn't necessarily be something that I would vlog with as my main camera because I do like using DSLRs with external microphones. It's definitely something I could see myself using as a B camera, like it's something that's just in my pocket for moments where it's a little bit too awkward to bring out a massive camera. It's definitely something I could see myself using. I have told you guys a lot of things that I like about it. There are a couple of things that I don't particularly love and they're just like nit picky kind of things. One being it does feel kind of plasticky. I have gotten used to it over the week, but when I first picked it up, I felt like it felt more plasticky than I like. As I said, I have gotten used to it, but that was my first impression when I picked it up. Oh, and maybe, maybe one small other thing is the memory card. They don't really like bounce out. So like you push it in to get it out and it doesn't really like jump out you have to you have to have some decent fingernails to get in there so i feel like that's something that could be improved on it just makes it a little little bit fiddly um there's always going to be a few things that you don't particularly love about a, a, a camera i don't think i've ever seen a perfect camera so i feel like you know that's normal. So this brings me to the end of this video what are my final thoughts do i think it lives up to the hype and I actually do. I think it's definitely worth $4.99 for a camera that gets you all of this. It gets you 4K HDR, it gets you 240 frames a second slow motion. And something that I do find really useful is that front LCD screen. As a vlogger, I just think it's great to be able to see yourself in the shot when you're framing it up or when you're taking photos or when you are uh, making videos. I really really like it this isn't a sponsored video by the way dji did send me the camera for free to review as a prototype before it came out but that's literally all they did i told them that i was going to give my absolute honest feedback on it and yeah i definitely think it lives up to the hype there's a lot of competition in this space every camera out there is a little bit different i think you need to figure out which camera has the things that cater to your particular needs the most because I feel like this camera can do things that other cameras can't do and there's definitely other cameras on the market that can do things that this camera can't do. There is no perfect camera. There is only the perfect camera for a specific situation if that makes sense and for a lot of situations this this is a really dope camera. Anyway, if you like today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. If you have any questions about the Osmo Action, I will do my best to reply to you in the comments. And if you would like to see more of these textile videos, let me know. Maybe I need to start my own channel soon. Let me know if you, you would like to see that as well. All right, we'll see you in the next video, which will be a regular vlog. Bye, guys.